ever after? Is it just a fairy tale or can we experience it? Let's talk about it with Charlie Collins on Steve Brown, etc. He's an old white guy, an author, broadcaster, and seminary professor who's sick of religion. And he's brought friends. Please welcome Steve Brown, etc. Hey, we're so glad you're here that you would take time from busy schedules to be with us is a high and holy compliment, and we consider it to be that. As I always say and always mean, you always have a place at our table. And by the way, I'm Steve, the aforementioned old white guy. Matthew Porter, the executive producer, is here. Matthew wonders if he's been eating lots of comfort food. Why does he feel so uncomfortable? <laughs> It'd feel better if you ate okra and liver uh, all over. Wouldn't overeat. <laughs> yeah. And you certainly wouldn't overeat. Our uh, producer, Jinx, is working hard in his little glass booth. Jinx, are you glad the elections are over? Yes, very much so. You have any more comment other than that? <laughs> no. Our executive producer wrote that line, and he said you would respond. I would. We're no, going to have to go over this and rehearse some more. Yes. You didn't know that. <laughs> I lost Our, the notes. Uh, video director, <laughs> one, ten, one man IT department, John Myers, is in his tech bunker. And just so you know, he was o up the whole weekend, 24-7. Uh, the hurricane did bad stuff to our computers. And uh, John, who is demon-possessed, but it is our <laughs> demons, and we're glad for it was able to perform miracles, but didn't get much sleep. Uh, so uh, we rise up and call him blessed. He's in his tech bunker. John edits this show, fixes our computers, and gets us all Netflix for free. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. George Bingham is the president of Key Life. George loves this time of year. The leaves change, the weather cools. And the electric bill drops. <laughs> and Kathy yeah. Wyatt is the soft feminine side of the program. You ought to look for Kathy's new baking-themed hymn book featuring Taste and See <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the sweet by and by. <laughs> oh, for a thousand tongues. <laughs> Matthew, that's one of your better ones. I wanted, I wanted that one. <laughs> hey guys, we've got a great guest for today. Uh, Charlie Collins is my friend, and we've been friends longer than a lot of you have been alive. Uh, we met years ago, and uh, I'm going to tell you about what I thought on that meeting. But you ever meet somebody you click with? Well, that's true with Charlie and with me, and we've been friends for a long time. He served as a pastor in South Carolina um, and in Arkansas. Then he had an, an attack of sanity, and he started working as a financial consultant for business owners and professionals, and he's done that for more than 30 years, people all over this country. And Charlie's debut book is called, which I hold in my nicotine-stained fingers, is called Happily Ever After. It's the microphone. <laughs> Rediscovering God's intent for your marriage. Charlie, thanks for taking time to be with us. Good to be with you, Steve. When we first met, uh, I don't know what happened, but we kind of clicked, and you said things to me that you probably wouldn't say to most people you had known for that short time. But we were off in a corner talking, and you asked me to pray for you. And I didn't I didn't know what was coming next. Then you said, I don't believe my marriage is going to make it. 
And then he told me about his marriage, and I decided uh, that it wasn't going to make it. Uh, it was like the pastor who crawled out on the ledge with a man who was committing suicide, and they talked for an hour, joined hands, and jumped together. <laughs> That's kind of the way I felt when I was talking to Charlie then. As he went on, I was thinking, hmm, I'm a professional religionist, you know, I do a whole lot of counseling and I'm supposed to be encouraging, but I don't believe this one can be fixed. And I don't know whether I told you that at that time, but I did start praying and so did a lot of others. And uh, I must confess my prayer was with very little faith, but a little bit of faith in a very big God goes a long way, and it did for a lot of us, and a radical change took place. In fact, when Charlie told me things were better and then good and then wonderful, I thought he was lying, uh, but he wasn't. And this book documents that, and you're going to find out somebody who's been there, who's done that, and has the bloody T-shirt, and he's honest enough to talk about it. So, Charlie, let's start with the bad. Uh, uh, back in that time to which I was referring, it really was bad, wasn't it? And you were headed for a divorce court. It was, uh, yeah. And bad is a good good word. It was pretty pretty rough. Now, Charlie, this is a show, and you, you can't. I mean, you got to talk. <laughs> yes, it was bad. It's not enough, man. We're going to close I down know how you microphones feel. and video cameras and go sad. home if you don't say more than that. <laughs> so, tell us about it. You want elaboration, huh? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Uh, I believe that day was up in Pen up in Philadelphia when we were at a board meeting. And uh, I remember that time. Uh, I, had, of course, I'd known of you and seen you for a lot of years earlier, but that's when we began to be friends and spent a lot of time. And I, I still remember, I still have a lot of those emails back and forth that you encouraged me. And I remember you would start off each one that you prayed for me that day. And you won't ever know how impactful that was because there were times in which I felt extremely alone. Mm. Uh, and, I, and I'm, uh, you know, going back and you want me to talk about the rough times and it's, uh, Gosh, whenever I do, it's it's really hard to imagine the contrast. And it's also that to feel and remember the pain of those years uh, is pretty painful. You, you, Char Charlie, you don't have to go into details. I know that's painful. You can find some of those uh, by reading the book and you ought to get it if you're in a marriage or you know friends who are going through trouble because this is a hopeful book uh, did you find because you were you're known you're a pretty public christian i mean you've served on a number of boards you've been a pastor people identify you as that and perfect Christians are supposed to have perfect marriages and be perfect <laughs> examples to imperfect Christians who are struggling. Was the loneliness because you just didn't think this was something that you ought to share with everybody? Partly, partly because it was just so incredibly difficult for anybody to understand that wasn't going through the same things. Yeah. As I mentioned in the book, Kathy and I, got married we we had enough prior baggage to fill a moving van <laughs> both of us came from incredibly dysfunctional situations and you know had come out of those with a significant level of pain going into marriage uh we had learned how to stuff them down into the corner well enough to live well but unfortunately when you Stuff a dead rat under the rug, it starts to smell and and it and it's and it starts to seep out uh, ugly 
up liquids and and that's kind of what happened in our marriage uh, after nine years we went to a uh, uh, we we felt called to the pastorate and so we went to seminary and pastored those churches the second church we went to uh, out of seminary you know, I had run off three pastors in three years uh, and somehow we felt like we had the we had the ability to help and uh, so we stayed there two years and uh, came out. A world's record. <laughs> <laughs> we were emotionally shot, physically shot, uh, and but it it was God's way of waking us up to where we were struggling. So we were floundering emotionally, physically, emotionally, financially for a couple of years. When Listen, the- we're going to return to that story. Because contrary to a lot of stories you read, this one has an unbelievably happy ending. And by the way, the name of the book, and you can get it at Amazon, is called Happily Ever After, Rediscovering God's Intent for Your Marriage. And frankly, between you and me, if God can save Charlie and Kathy's marriage, He can save yours too. (laughs) Don't you dare go anywhere because just like Jesus, we will return. Charlie Collins, and his new book is called Happily Ever After, Rediscovering God's Intent for Your Marriage. And we kind of truncated the story because we were looking at the dark side, the road that leads to a divorce court where it gets colder than the fire that you were dealing with with the marriage. And uh, God began to turn that around. You you said that you both were led to get some counseling. Uh, talk about that and some of the factors that caused the turn, not necessarily the fix, but to give you some hope. Well, the uh, we were just crushed after leaving that church. Uh, you know, it, it was a very, very difficult situation. And <clears throat> uh Obviously, as a young man, I, I there was a limited amount that I could do to change the difficulties that they had. But, you know, maybe God used that. But I realized that God was using that more as a training ground for me uh, mm-hmm. because I hadn't I hadn't gone out of calling. I'd gone out of compulsion that I felt uh, I was trying to live up to what I was expected to because I could never. In growing up in the dysfunctional situation, I could never do enough. I could never be enough. And so uh, I was trying to be enough. So anyway, we we were back and just crushed because we had obviously misjudged our direction. And we uh, began to realize we needed some help. So we went to counseling. And unfortunately, in going to counseling, that brought up a lot of old memories that we had stuffed, like the dead skunk under the rug. <clears throat> it, uh, when it starts to come up, uh, you have to deal with it. And as we dealt with it, it was really hard. Uh, there was a lot of approach avoidance conflict. Uh, a lot of times we would go forward a while and then hit places that were too painful and back away. I think we went to 11 counselors over a 20 year period of time. (laughs) Worse than never mind. (laughs) Uh, Charlie, uh, did you find that helpful or just uh, bringing up the dirt? Well, it, it was a process over the years. I mean, we had some really, really good counselors and, uh, but there's a period of there. It, it takes a lot 
to be able to deal with issues honestly. It's much easier to stuff than to process. And processing was really painful. Uh, and some of the some of the background issues are just really too painful to really imagine. But unfortunately, when people run out of their own resources, uh, then all they have to deal with is their pain. And, unfor- and that gets compounded oftentimes for generations. And that's what happened to us. Hmm. What changed? I mean, was there a burst of light, a visit by an angel, a hmm. dream? a Bible verse, a sermon, a book? What was it that made you decide there might be hope? Uh, God has a habit of doing Red Sea parting miracles throughout history. And so he decided to do one in us. Uh, Mine, I, I give a little more detail in the book, but basically in mine, I had, uh, about five specific ways that God spoke to me uh, through uh, a tape from a missionary, two tapes from missionaries, uh, two sermons, uh, one from a pastor I liked, one from a pastor I didn't, and uh, a page in Oswald's Chambers book. Uh, and each one of those just hit me right in the eye. And, and I realized what God was asking me to do was give up all of my safety valves. Yeah. And oh safety, you know, where we, we escape whenever we get too pain, in too much pain. And that's what we all do. You, um, did you give up trying to fix Kathy? Well, that was the, the last thing that he gave me was, uh, asked me to give up was defending myself against criticism. Uh, unfortunately, I grew up with a bipolar mother who was extremely intelligent and was able to tell me in no uncertain terms what a horrible person, Christian man, son, uh, a person I could be. And um, so it was difficult for me to handle criticism and we all deserve it because we're all flawed and we all have a flesh. So, um, but God just told me to shut my mouth (laughs) and let Kathy share all the pain that I caused and not defend it. That was really hard. Uh, But it took me to a place uh, where I had to, admit and experience the pain. And then when I reached that point one morning at the most excruciatingly painful point of my life, uh, I was able to hear Jesus when he said, Charlie, am I enough for you? And I was able to say, okay, if you, you are enough, if that's all I have. And I couldn't have said that if I hadn't have been willing to give up those escape valves and accept the pain uh, because holding a beach ball underwater just is really hard, but we do it. Uh, Most of us do it for decades. Was Kathy's experience parallel to yours? Uh, Not parallel, but during that time period, she went through her own experience uh, and it, it came out. It was interesting that uh, how God used it. You know, we were both ministering and uh, with local ministries and uh, she had an experience much similar, but it was about five years, six years later. And uh, I, I had to go through a period of time where I, all I heard was, uh, God's love from him uh, and, and recognize that my calling was to see her as God sees me. And God made it real clear that he sees me the same way he saw Abraham. You know, in Hebrews, he says real simply, look at Abraham. Here's a man who never wavered in faith. And of course, I raised my hand and said, hey, Lord, weren't you paying attention at the 75 years when he looked like he was wavering in faith a whole lot. (laughs) (laughs) And God just said, yeah, 
But Charlie, I see things from the beginning to the end. Oh man, great story. I uh, and if you have, if you don't find this hopeful, and you're going through marriage problems, you're dead as a doornail. <laughs> I mean, these are words of life. Uh, we pursue sin a lot on this program and in our lives, and we know it's darkness. But it's rare when you see a, an ending or you hear about the difference that Jesus makes in life. We're going to talk more about that on the other end of the break. The name of the book is Happily Ever After. The name of the author is Charlie Collins. the show and the other programs on keylife.org would you help us let others know it's as easy as clicking like and share and subscribe and it really does multiply the work of the ministry and for every new person that you uh, place under this ministry you get three free sins. So there we go. enough said, <laughs> just get to work. Um, Charlie you've talked about, um, you know, struggles that are, you know, in our early years and so forth that many of us experience and uh, uh, dysfunction from families. And, and part of the complication with that is uh, not only the variations in the, in the dysfunctions and the difficulties, but in the differences and variations in the way we react to them, which uh, can bring in the factors of, of personality, for example, and how we uh, face our past and face the struggles of the present and interacting with our, our uh, spouses. Can you talk some about how you um, integrated the the personality factor and how you talk about that in the book i i mentioned in the book the uh the way that impacted me when i saw that verse in genesis where god said let us make man in our image male and female he created him and that helped me begin to realize and understand the unique beauty and how God works to create each one of us and that we reflect a part of the image of the very creator. Now, there's so much in the vastness of our creator that it's the only way there can be a reflection is in a combination of the body of Christ with all of us. And that's when it gets really beautiful. But the closest thing I see to the reflection of the Trinity is in marriage. When a husband and a wife are submitted to the Lord and connected with the Holy Spirit, we more closely reflect the Trinity. And I and the Enneagram is just one of many good personality observations that that just simply observes that we're all different and but the the more we understand each other's differences the more i can respect and give grace to my wife and she she to me and as we began to study that and see our differences and i was able to respect those and i know every personality has core weaknesses core strengths core longings and core desires. Uh, I know what my core fears are, my core weaknesses are, and they tend to respond and react ex to exactly the opposite of the way Kathy does. 
Mm -hmm. For instance, Kathy needs a a lot of personal time, one-on-one with the Lord, a lot of alone time because the way she's wired personality-wise. I don't need as much, but the Lord has been teaching me to really enjoy it and appreciate it. But the more I respect her need for time, which is not a rejection of me, it's just the need for her to recharge. Then the more I can give her the grace she needs and it, that's been a fascinating study. Uh, so we've we've gotten into different personality studies, looking at at how the heart reacts, and seeing that that's just given us a greater awe of how God created each of us, so that we're not trying to change each other. We're just trying to understand and know more about this incredibly wonderful people that I have person that I have the privilege of living with. Charlie, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed this book. It's very relevant to um, really anybody who's married. I've been happily married for 15 years. Um, the rub is that I've actually been married for 20 years. Um, <laughs> and my wife would laugh at that joke. Uh, <laughs> but it is you love you very much. <laughs> We've had hard times. We've had hard times. Um, I, I always connect to anything that feels actionable or feels like um, kind of a force multiplier of, you know, the benefit is really disproportionate to the effort that goes into it. Um, and we may need to kind of fully flesh this out on the other side of the break, but you talk about a concept called as soon as, and it seemed like that really had kind of an immediate benefit to the marriage. Wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that. I think God knows the right timing for our life. And part of the first thing that God calls me to do is surrender. And that's the hardest thing possible because of my pride. Mm. Mm. But as soon as I surrender, he shows up. Man. Well, it's hard for me to identify with that being (laughs) ordained and all and having it together and being an example to others of my commitment and my faith. And what do you mean you hear angels laughing? (laughs) Uh, That's not laughter, that's respect. We're gonna talk more. (laughs) And if you believe any of that, you'll believe anything. Charles Collins is our guest and uh, we're gonna get some contact information on him on the other side of the break so you can check some of this out. But above all, Buy the book. He needs the money. friend Charlie Collins, who's the real deal. And his new book is called Happily Ever After, Rediscovering God's Intent for Your Marriage. And if you'll go to charlievcollins.com, you can get some information on him and on the book, and you can find out where you can get the book. And if you're struggling This is a good book that will change your life. Charlie, before the break, I asked you a question and I didn't really leave. We didn't leave enough time to get a full answer. But um, as I was reading the book, there was something that you said uh, that you tried and it made kind of an immediate impact, which I like. I know God works over time and years and healing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. But is there something I could do now that I could see a, 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 a result now? I like that. Um, and, and and there was this concept called as soon as. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about what does that mean and what's involved and what uh, impact did it make on your marriage? I, th- I think God shows up as soon as we need him. And it's, and it's not always the, as soon as we want. And there were so many times over those 
first 29 years of my marriage, especially those 20 really painful ones, is that I, I, I longed for something different. I longed for there to be a change. I longed for there to be a, a breakthrough. Uh, we worked hard. Uh, we kept going back to counselors. We kept seeking to process our, our stuff. Mm-hmm. And there were many a time when I would ask God, can he give us some relief, you know, or kill one of us, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what, you know, <laughs> the, but. And tuck you under the rug with the skunk. <laughs> <laughs> the right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and I just believe God. And as I look back on it in history, and I, I realized that God showed up as soon as he needed, because what I, I didn't need intimacy with Kathy. I needed intimacy with him. Mm. And what I needed, what both of us needed was the desperate intimacy that Jesus has given us. And that Jesus told the disciples, hey, guys, it's good that I'm leaving your physical presence because I'm going to send another. And he sent Holy Spirit to be with me all the time. And I'm never without intimacy, but I can so easily miss it. And I did for so long. And so I was trying to pray that Kathy would change. She was praying that I would change. And God was working on the only one that mattered. And the only one that I needed to be focused on was asking him to change me. And that took surrender. And as soon as I surrendered each point, I began to understand, okay. And so when I reached that surrender and said, okay, you're enough. I had to say that that you're enough if nothing changes for the next 50 years. And the implications of that was difficult to swallow, but it began make me understand just how much Jesus's love was there for me in the dark. And that's, that's why I can say if I had to go through every single day of those 29 years again, to have the intimacy he's given me with him and the joy of intimacy I have with Kathy, I'd do it again. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And that concept is not just for marriage. It's for a whole list of things that we face in life. And it is so important. Kathy? Um, Charlie, I don't uh, read many books on marriage because they don't apply to me. (laughs) Um, But I do see uh, uh, I do see a pattern which is totally understandable when people make discoveries in their own lives and marriages and they want to be helpful and share with other people, they, they share common misconceptions, you know, delusions, things, things that are just not the things that are, that are not not true. And, and I think it, it's never a bad thing to share what some of those delusions are, but also um, not just to leave it there, but what is the related biblical truth? Amen. <laughs> so you, yeah, but I'm looking for you to share what some of those delusions are. <laughs> oh, well, I've got a whole I'm chapter. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I exactly. I that. Do that. Yeah. So you uh, got to, you have to condense it into about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. No big challenge or anything. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, one of those delusions in that chapter was I said, this book will help your marriage. And I said, no, this book is intended to point you in the direction of the only hope you have for real intimacy. And that's in Jesus's heart. Hmm. Oh, man. We go everywhere else, don't we? Yeah. I work with two other ministries that and our main focus is calling people to find their heart and to because we're all all of us on this planet are looking for connection. We're looking for love. We're looking for intimacy, but we look for it in all the wrong places. 
Kathy can't validate me. Only my creator can validate me. And we're looking for that and we, we long for it. You know, the, and I hate to re- reference a movie that people may not have seen, but in Private Ryan, uh, Private Ryan and Saving Private Ryan, he, he's, he's at the graveyard in France and he's, he's hoping that he's lived up to the man who died who said, earn this. Six people died to save him. There's no way he could ever earn that. His life wasn't more valuable than all six of them or any one of them. Private Ryan heard the, heard the message, earn this. And what Jesus tells each of us is receive this. Mm. He gave it all. And then he just turns to me and says, Receive my love because I love you more than you could ever hope oh, or man. anywhere else. Charlie, that is profound. And what a wonderful way to land this airplane. You guys uh, need to get this book. And uh, it's, it's a lot more detailed than we can cover in an hour here. Go to charlievcollins.com or go to Amazon. Uh, you'll find here something that can make a major difference in your life. You got the smell of it on this hour, but you got to read the book to go into depth. Charlie, thanks for taking time from a busy schedule and being with us. Hope we can do it again. You're supposed to say thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Steve. It's always good to be with you. Guys, we're out of here. If you stay around, we'll tell you who we're going to do it unto next week. So don't go anywhere. love Charlie Collins. He's the, he's the real deal. And you saw why I love him on this broadcast. God uses him in some amazing ways. He's a coach with people that are married and going through difficulties. He, uh, he and Kathy, uh, make difference in people's lives and the concepts, as I said, are not just for marriage. They're for life. And this isn't a Disney World thing. Uh, Let's pretend things are okay and be nice and we'll join hands, sing Kumbaya and walk off in the sunset together. Not that kind of thing. This is real stuff, real problems, real pain. And, uh, And when you read this book, you'll apply it to your life, even if your marriage is a really good one. There's so many things where the principles really work and they don't, uh, they're not true because they work. They work because they're true. So don't let its simplicity get to you. Don't turn away from it with your cynicism. Get a hold of this book and then think about some of the things that Charles says, um, Once you reach that point where you give up and say, this is not fixable, which is where I was with Charlie's marriage, that's when God moves in. And all of a sudden, you find you are valued and that that you can rest in that. And you don't have anything to prove or anything to fix. You just are. Augustine said, if you want to be mature, just be. You can't do that until you know what Charlie was talking about. Kathy, who's going to be on next week? 
Next week is exciting. Believe it or not, next week is our Thanksgiving show mm. and it's just us. And so I decided what you're going to cook a turkey. What more appropriate time than for me to teach you pedestrian people how to do some cooking. So <gasps> note to each other, Mr. Brown, you will be learning how to do cornbread stuffing and stuff and roast a turkey. Jinx, you will be learning how to make a butternut squash souffle. Oh, Mr. Porter, you will be doing roasted sweet potato, wild rice, arugula salad. Oh, man. Mr. Myers will be doing garlic mashed potatoes. George, cranberry brie bites for you, please. And I'll be doing <laughs> pan a chocolat. Oh, this show is making God. me hungry. <laughs> Guys. Must be I a want three you hour to be here next episode. week. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> Trust me on this. But it's going to be fun. And between now and then, don't do anything we wouldn't do. That gives you a wide, wide berth.